Hi, I'm Faye Bryant. I'm a woman, wife, mom, mother-in-law, grandmother, and friend. I help people through my work as an author, as a motivational speaker, and as a purpose coach. I am foremost, though, a believer in Jesus Christ, and I share that faith with you here pretty regularly. You gotta love life when it happens, right? Let's take a look today at today's scripture, and we'll have a little talk. Hello? 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 Is anybody out there? Out there? Out there? It's crazy to get on live and then just do stupid stuff, isn't it? I think there are people making a living doing that, though. Hmm. Give you just a minute. I know folks are just now getting the notification that I'm live here in the in the Faye Bryant studio. Oh, what have y'all thought about the weather lately? I know here in East Tennessee, it's been really nice the last couple of days. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, though. But like up in Alaska, you guys are getting hammered with some snow, aren't you? Wow. Hmm. I guess we'll get snow soon enough. Maybe. Possibly. So. Oh, goodness. Come on, people. All right. Let's. Oh, let's see. My comments. Right. Hey, listen. Uh, I welcome everybody here. I hope that you will uh, let me know where you're watching from. Just drop that down in the comments, wherever they're at for you. <laughs> and, um, you know, just let me know. And listen, if you've got anything to say during this time that we're talking, that I'm talking, please be sure and uh, just say so. Put it in the comments and uh, let's let's talk. Let's talk. I've switched from doing this as a Saturday sit down to doing a Monday musing, but because of a granddaughter's basketball game, it's a Tuesday talk. Okay, fine. It's a Monday musing on Tuesday. We're going to see how this works. I would, I want to be able to offer more of you the opportunity to, to be here live. That's what my aim is. So today, tonight, we're going to talk about change. Ooh, change is a four-letter word, isn't it? For some of us, for some of us. Um, but we want to talk about how to deal with it without losing control. Ooh, you know, like handling change without throwing a hissy fit. Yeah, I get it. It's not easy, is it? Okay, but let's talk. Let's talk. It is so good to have you. Um, listen, be sure and let me know where you're from. Put it there in the comments. And also share with me what you think about change. What do you think about change? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you just endure it? What? Tell me what you're thinking. I am here today to discuss, um, to talk to talk and to go over this for every Christian who wants to know how to survive the changes in their lives and live a normal life without feeling out of control. Yeah. We don't like that feeling out of control thing. Before we get st started, though, if you know somebody who hates change, please tag them or share this on your timeline to let others know. All right. Great. Thank you. All right, let's talk. I'm going to share three thoughts with you. Thought number one, what are changes that freak us out? What are the changes that just freak us out? And 
put it in the comments there if there are any changes that have just really thrown you a curve. Uh, for me, hearing the words, you have cancer, really threw me for a curve. Yeah, oh, there was that other one too. I want a divorce. No, wait, I was the one that asked for that. So that was my own change that I instituted. But, but you know, there are changes that really do just freak us out. There are health changes, uh, changes in our own health, like a, a diagnosis that we did not expect that just kind of came out of the blue, or the even finding out what it is that we've been dealing with, getting a name for it. And it might not be a name that we're ready to deal with. Um, but having something happen in our health, that's just a really a, a change that's hard to deal with. Relationship changes. If you're in a dating relationship and you break up, oh, that's hard. That's change that we don't like. Uh, getting married, that's a change. We like it, but it is a change that we have to deal with. There's divorce, new friendships, ending of friendships. Anybody? Anybody have something like that? Um, residence changes. When we move into a place, out of a place, when we move a long distance, even if we move nearby, it's change. And sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. But either way, it creates a stress in our lives. All right. Oh, job changes. Yeah, those can really freak us out because we can, even though it's a job that we might really want, something that we've liked, when we go into that job, we go in not knowing everything that we need to know about that job. We go in not as confident about it. And so there's, you know, there's change going on and we're a little freaked out. And then there's those changes that aren't so good when we're told that we're no longer needed at that job. When we get a demotion, when we get a promotion, there's there's all kinds of things within jobs that that change and it just mm, knocks us for a loop. Um, death, death is a big one, uh, one of the big changes that can freak us out. Losing someone that you care about kind of derails you. It really does it derails you. And then there's consequences of our choices. You know, um, in the novels, Louise and Elena, Louise made a really big choice that resulted in some really bad consequences for her and her daughter. Um, when Louise's son-in-law, Elena's husband, uh, told Louise about all these things that Elena was doing, running around with another man, mistreating the children and all this. Uh, Louise believed him. She made the choice to believe him instead of believing her daughter, the daughter that she had brought up, the daughter she had taught. And that, that choice hurt Elena deeply hurt her enough that she essentially said, that's it, I have no family. And she ran away to live separated from her family for a lot of years. Yeah, choices, choices, the consequences of those choices can be changed that we don't really want. So why do those changes really freak us out? Why? Well, health, you know, we want to feel good. When we don't feel good, when we feel really bad and it's suddenly bad, that's scary. And we think about all the, the things that it could be, and it's scary to have those changes happening. I know for my mother, when she, when the onset of Alzheimer's started, it scared her and she hid within herself. Does that make sense? She um, she didn't want anybody else knowing what was going on. And so she hid. She she protected herself and she protected us from knowing. Um, you know, we want our loved ones to feel good, too. 
I mean, if you're married and your spouse hurts or feels bad, I mean, you, you wish that you could take the pain or whatever from them. But there's, that's one reason why we freak out is because it's scary when our health is not optimum. Relationships. We might love to be around people constantly. And then for some reason, we're not able to. I know that there are so many people struggling with that right now with the isolation and the quarantine and the all of the things that are going on with this coronavirus stuff. It's hard. It's hard. There are some of you who thrive on being around other people. And I know that this time is just driving you nuts. And it's, it's a change that you are not enjoying. And I feel for you. I do. It's hard when those things hit and we just have no control over it. I do. I get that. There's some folks who don't mind the being alone. And, you know, we're okay with this the way things are right now. Yeah. But it's still a change, you know, when you're told that, you know, even though I love being alone, to be told that we can't have a party. You know, that Jack and I had a big party planned for the first part of the year, and that got knocked in the head when COVID came along. And that was pretty, that was a change I did not like. I did not like that I did not get to have that party to celebrate his retirement. I did not like that. Do you know what I really didn't like? Was that shortly after that happened, the place where we were going to have it went out of business completely. Now that broke my heart, but it was a change that I'm, I'm still not happy with. Because if we're going to do this again a year later or whatever, it's I'm going to have to find someplace else to do it. Change. Mm. Okay. Why do relationship changes bother us? Well, if we've been married for a long time and then we are divorced, there's a loneliness. There's a betrayal. There's a, a broken heart. And we don't want that change. We don't like that. When, when, even being around friends and we're kind of left out, pushed to the side, ignored. That's change that we don't like. You know, we, we do not like feeling unloved and we don't like feeling like we're unwanted. Those are changes that can really freak us out. That's why those changes freak us out. Our residence changes. Sometimes it's a rite of passage because we, we're moving to college or we're moving out to our first apartment, our first home. We've just gotten married and we're moving to a new house. You know, all kinds of different things. Sometimes we're leaving our parents. Um, sometimes we're leaving a spouse. We have new neighbors that we have to get to know. We have this new location. We have to figure out how to get to the places we want to go. We got to find the grocery store, got to find the school, got to find the doctor's office, got to find a doctor, got all these changes that just moving to a new location can bring. Our job, if there's a job change, you know, we have, it could be that it's freaking us out because now we've got to do training. We've got to do learning to get to know our job better. There are new responsibilities. There's new friendships with new coworkers. There's opposition to us being in that position. We have to learn how to manage time and sometimes to manage people. And it's just change. And death, death can, can bring the change with a fear. We don't know, we don't know how we're going to get along without that person. We don't know anything, right? We just... And finances, you know, if you, if your spouse passes away, there's that issue of finances. How are you going to get by? Even if you know that you've been well provided with life insurance and so forth, savings accounts and all, there's still that, well, it was this way yesterday and now it's that way today. And what am I going to do? There's a panic because of change. 
there's loneliness, there's angle, anger, grief, all these changes that come around death. And all of these freak us out for one main reason. Loss of control. See, we think we have control. <laughs> we think we're in control. And we're not. We're not. Not at all. I mean, we are in control of one thing, one huge thing. Do you know what that is? Anyone know what that is? Mm hmm. The one thing that we are in control of is our response to situations. Now, see, a situation, we're going to feel something as a result of something that has gone on around us. But what we do with that is our response. And we are able to control that. You can get mad as a hornet, but you don't have to cuss the person out. You can be as scared as can be, but you don't have to run and hide. You know, you can, you can choose your response. You're in control of it. So how do we handle change without that feeling out of control thing? The first thing we have to do is to recognize that change is going to happen. It will. It's going to happen. It's a part of life. Now, we cannot prepare for all those individual things that might happen. But what we do is we prepare ourselves for all things. And we do that, Christians, through daily prayer and Bible study. Not just reading a passage in a devotional. I wrote one, by the way but by asking questions of the Lord and seeking those answers. You can uh, try this. Absolutely try this. Ask the Lord a question that you are dealing with. Something, um, how am I supposed to handle this coworker? What am I supposed to do with this child? What, what am I, you know, how do I? Ask that question as you get started on that day's reading. And then expect that you're going to have an answer and you start reading and you start reading in those scriptures and you just keep that, that thought you've made a request of God. You're seeking him for that answer. And before long, you're going to have an answer. Now I'm not going to say it's going to be poof like that. It's right there on the page, but this, the spirit of God using the word of God is going to speak to your heart. And help you know how to handle that situation. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. But that's that's our God. And that's how we prepare for change. Is to take that time and spend that time with him. Looking deeply into the word. Learning it. Applying it to our lives on a constant day-by-day -day basis. Letting the spirit change us. Every day. Every moment of every day. And pray about everything. He says to pray without ceasing. So that means you can just keep on a, a constant, constant conversation with him all day long. And then when you get ready to go to bed at night, just say, hey, okay, Lord, amen. Do you know that amen doesn't mean the end? No, it doesn't mean the end. It doesn't mean this is the end of my prayer. It means let it be so. Let it be so. So see, I'm going to be saying amen all throughout my prayer because I want these things that I'm praying about. I'm asking the Lord to let it be so. Let it be so. All right, back to <laughs> look for the answers that you need for everyday life and you will find out that when changes come, you are better prepared for them. Not because you know how to handle that particular situation better, but because you have a stronger trust in the Lord. Can you ask for anything better? 
Okay, this is one that I did not use to believe. I really didn't. But move. Physically move. Go take a walk. Go for a run. Work out at the gym. You can even, and this is studies that I, I read about, you can even take a towel and wring it and hold it. I mean, hold it tight. Get your whole, all your arm into it. For 30 to 60 seconds, hold that thing tight. Don't let it loosen up. And hold that tight and then release it. And oddly enough, after doing that, there are going to be uh, stress busters, the hormones going through your body, helping you to deal with what you're dealing with. Who knew? Get out and move. I, I did a uh, workshop with a lady a while, with a couple of ladies a while back, and they talked about, and it's this is imperative for those of us who are at home more than we're at any workplace right now. They talked about taking brain breaks. When you're sitting and working at your desk at home, when your students are working, doing their schoolwork at home, they we all need a brain break. We need to be able to get up away from the computer, away from the books, and go and do something completely different from that thing that we've been doing. It might mean going out in the yard and throwing a ball. You know, it might mean going for a walk. It might mean going out and just laying in the sun for a few minutes. I've done that even when it's chilly because you get that sun and it just starts baking into you and you're just, just let it go. Just let the, the things go, the thing that you were working on. And usually that brief few minutes, say 15 minutes after you have done that, you can go back in. And the work that you were trying to get done, that you were struggling with, suddenly it's just that easy. Works for your kids too. Move. Just move. Contracting and releasing your muscles helps your mind find better solutions. Now, you can also, here's a choice, feel good. Oh, but Faye, I can't feel good when all this is going on. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. How many of us, how many have you seen people uh, posting like cat videos or dog videos or pictures of different animals as a way to brighten a day on their social media? It helps. It helps. So pull up YouTube or watch a video that you've done yourself. Uh, Little kids, I get so tickled hearing little kids like little toddlers laugh. Cracks me up every time. The thing is to allow yourself to laugh. Allow yourself to feel good, even if it's just for a few moments. Go play a, a, a song that you really like and sing loud with it. Sing loud. Don't care who's there. Just sing it loud. Speak aloud your gratitude for something. You know, we can record them uh, by writing, by typing. But if you can speak aloud those things that you are grateful for, it's very helpful because, you know, we um, there's a spiritual realm around us that we don't see. But God loves to hear us thank him. For the things that he has provided. We, our ears need to hear us thanking him for those things. And let me tell you, the enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy needs to hear you thanking God for the things that he has provided because it takes his power away. Don't you want to do that? Yeah, me too. All right, so here's the thing. You can take care, you can choose to take care of yourself or someone else will take care of you. Choosing the best ways to handle change is important enough to do something about it. 
thoughts, issues. Now, remember, you can choose to take care of yourself or someone else will be taking care of you. Make your choice today. So quickly, what we've covered is we can know the kinds of changes that really freak us out. We can we can look at those and and, you know, we've discussed those. But you look at the ones that are going to really freak you out, the things that would really drive you nuts or send you in a tailspin. Two, we can understand why those changes freak us out. We can break them down and we can see what is it about that change that would just freak me out. We can learn how to handle the changes so that we don't feel out of control. When we draw near to God, he draws near to us, he says. He, when we are content, when we give him thanks for all the things in our lives, he gives us a peace that we cannot understand. We can't comprehend it. And so when we learn those things, we learn how to handle change. And we don't feel out of control. And here's the thing. We must take steps now to become resilient against changes. Listen, I'm asking you to write down in the comments what your greatest takeaway from this is. But I want to let you know the, the bottom line is that you really can survive change without feeling out of control. You really can. Oh, and before I forget, if you're one of those uh, growing Christians, maturing Christians who wants to know how to make this kind of thing even easier, may I suggest that you watch this webinar about closing the gap between dreaming and doing at theunhackablelife.com. Right there on the... No, right there. <laughs> okay. And and what you learn there will make it easier for you to survive change without feeling out of control. There we go. That's it for this week. I'll see you on Monday. If the granddaughter has a basketball game, I will make plans to do this from the car next week. <laughs> All right. Have a fabulous week. Get ready to face the changes that you might face. And know that your God is with you. Until next time, I'm Faye Bryant. Bye. Hey, Faye Bryant back again. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you find these scriptures and the encouragement that goes with them beneficial to your faith walk, I would love to hear from you. Drop a comment below and let me know what you're thinking, what you feel about what's been said. Let me know if it helps. Just let me know. And listen, if you want to be sure you don't miss any of these, click the subscribe button below and be sure to click the bell so you get notifications when every video goes live. I hope that you have a fabulous day walking out your faith. Bye.